two men bobsled, and watch out, guys. Those guys have tighter suits than we do. Today on Winter Speed, it's World Cup two-man bobsledding from Calgary's Olympic track. We'll also take a look back at the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat and the voice behind it. Just like in auto racing where there's a pit area, the same holds true here for the sport of bobsledding. Hi, everybody. I'm John Morgan, joined by Clark Flynn. We're on top of the track here at Canada Olympic Park in the pit area as the teams prepare for our World Cup two-man bobsled competition. We have 30 sleds on hand from 14 nations. Clark, pretty good field. Very strong field, and I think we're going to see some super results here. We've had great ice all week during training, so I think we're going to see some fast starts as well as some fast downtimes, maybe in some track records. Now, who do you like here in the competition? So I like Pierre Luders of Canada. He won the event here last year and he's had some excellent start times on the World Cup circuit this year and I think it's pretty well his track. Uh, Brian Scheimer who's recovering well from a hamstring uh, calf injury. I think he's had some good training times and uh, he's certainly a contender. Mark Tout of Great Britain had some good World Cup results, has a good start. He knows his track as well. And then Zamura from Czechoslovakia had some good training times and uh, he could be in the hunt too. Well weather plays a big part here in bobsledding and standing by at track side is our colleague Blaine Applegate to tell us how crucial it'll be. John and Clark, thank you very much. I'm told by the track crew that today's conditions are absolutely perfect for two-man action. And of course, our competition conditions update is brought to you by the Columbia Interchange System, the system that is geared to change as quickly as Mother Nature. Today's racing will take place under partly cloudy skies. The air temperature is 32 degrees, the track temperature 26 degrees, and as I said, the track condition is considered excellent. Now, it's important to note that officials here had their track crew out overnight, making sure that this track was going to be in absolutely perfect condition for today's race. They tell me this morning that they achieved every goal they wanted to. They got out all the loose snow and any loose debris that sometimes blows in a track overnight, and things are absolutely A-OK -okay for racing. So we could very well see track record times today. John, Clark, back to you. Thanks, Blaine. Blaine talks about this famous Olympic track here at Canada Olympic Park and the ice conditions. Well, let's take a ride down it right now. 1,500 meters, 14 corners. Up here at the top, you have slow speeds. It makes it very critical for the driver and crew not to make any mistakes. Bob Slutty, it's not the guy who steers the most that wins. It's the guy who steers the least. Up here with 35-mile-an-hour speeds, just a slight squeeze in the turning handles gets you on and off corners up at the top of the track but now you start to motor coming into the three corner combination seven eight and nine this is where you want to reach the maximum speed of the course here in omega 180 degree change of direction now in curve eight here you must exit straight down the middle of this straightaway the maximum speed part of the course 76 miles an hour for two man sleds four and a half g's of force on the athletes you exit here going uphill it slows you down a little bit now a three corner combination called a labyrinth a big sweeping left here throws the athletes to the side. And now you glide towards the finish. Here you hope not to make any mistake in the finish corner. It's almost 56 seconds in time what we're going to see here today on the Calgary track. We're just about set for the second heat of competition, but let's take a look back at the first heat highlights. Here's USA number three, Jim Herbert, Winchester, Massachusetts. His brakeman, Chip Mitten from Macon, Georgia, not a bad start time at the top of the track, but Herbert was at a disadvantage starting in 23rd spot of the 30 sled field. He ended up tied for 10th. Meanwhile, USA number one, Brian Scheimer, he was in ninth place here to the first heat. Scheimer jumped into the sled at the start and wrapped the steering cables around his feet. It wasn't until the third corner that he finally got control. By then, he had erased a tremendous amount of valuable time. A very disappointing finish, though, for the USA one sled, especially because he was running in the top five all week long in practice. The best of the USA sleds was Randy Will of Endicott, New York, with his brakeman Jeff Water to Schenectady, finishing in seventh year to the first heat. Of the three U.S. sleds in competition, Will was driving the only non-Bodine sled. The big story of the first heat, though, was Canadian Pierre Luders and brakeman Dave McEachran. Looters won this World Cup event last year, 
and wanted to prove to the rest of the field that was no fluke. He went out and smashed the track record, being the first man ever to go below 56 seconds on the Calgary Olympic Park track. He also served notice that he is a favorite at the upcoming Olympics. Six other sleds also broke the track record here in Calgary on a very fast racing day. So standings, Canada won, Luders in first place. The Italian sled and Great Britain are both tied in second, only tenth of a second off. USA sled Randy Wills in seventh, Scheimer's in ninth, and Herbert's in tenth. But look how close they are. Only 600 separating those three sleds. So we come back. It's the second heat of York World Cup two-man bobsledding from the Olympic track in Calgary, Alberta. This is my version of the one-man bobsled. What do you see the two-man bobsled coming up? The Jeff Bodine Bobsled Project, building the first USA-made Olympic bobsleds since 1956. Purchase official apparel and collectibles today. All proceeds go directly to the U.S. bobsled team for equipment and technical support. Call 1-800-BOBSLED today. When most manufacturers develop a new truck, they start with a model. Good idea. Here's ours. Introducing the first and only family of trucks designed from the inside out. A design that starts with you and has become the all-new Chevy S-Series. Everything else is history. toss and turn all night long? Do you wake up with neck and shoulder pain? Try the Contour Pillow, anatomically designed for the natural contour of your head and neck to support and align your spine for a great night's sleep. Look, ordinary pillows lose shape and sag, causing neck tension and back pain. But the Contour Pillow provides gentle orthopedic support. Tense muscles relax. You awake refreshed. The difference I feel in my neck and my back is really amazing. Best of all, my husband doesn't snore anymore. Therapeutic pillows cost $60 or more. Now enjoy the ultimate night's sleep for only $19.95. Order in the next 10 minutes and we'll also include this washable cover absolutely free. Enjoy the best night's sleep you've ever had or return it for a full refund. The Contour Pillow is not available in stores. Order now. For rush delivery of your Contour Pillow, have your credit card ready and call now 1-800-238-8383. Or send $19.95 plus $5.95 shipping to Contour Pillow, PO Box 11624, Charlotte, North Carolina. Winter Speed on Prime Network is being brought to you by York International, world leader in heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration technology for sports venues. By Columbia Sportswear Company. And by the IBM ThinkPad, official notebook computer of the U.S. bobsled team. One of our first sleds is Jamaica One. Driver Dudley Stokes, his brother Christian on the brakes. Dudley was driving that Jamaican sled at the 80 Olympics in Calgary when they had that famous crash. Here's how Lynn Swan and I made the call. All he can do up and down the crash. Well, this is bad for a four man to do. They're watching the outlet here. Look at the hand. Oh, he's oh, over there. Oh, he's got problems there. Stay in the sled, guys. Do you think yourself, do you understand the sport now, six years in it, uh, you're pretty much on your own, or are you confident you can take care of your own equipment and uh, do what you have to do to be competitive? I'm, I'm sure of it at this point. That won't be our problem. If we can get our start times down to where they were when we started the sport, um, I will have a real impact this year. Pretty serious statement from the Jamaicans. Well, look at Dudley's got his head up. He's looking down the track, hips underneath. His brother almost beat him into the sled there. Here we see good high lift, reaches across where his balance gets in, but his brother's got his head down, his hip behind him, no power there. His arm, get in. Get yeah, he's in his all his turned arm. around there. That affects the sled a little bit, doesn't it? Well, of course, they'd be out of the drive lines by then, those grooves we see at the top to keep the sled tracking right before they load. That'd kick the sled uh, sideways a bit, or Dudley would have to steer so it's in. What a relaxed guy this is. Oh, he oh, goes over that piece of tape still on the track. 75, four, not bad speed, but here's the place where they crashed. At the 88 Olympics, the famous crash boy swoops to there, but Clark, look same at this. Same in the first heat, we see that uh, piece of rubber flicking back and forth. 
That's got to be distracting, huh? Yeah, yeah, and it's going to cost, too. The, the articulation's not as smooth as it would be. Well, there's Jamaica 1, threw one down. Dudley Stokes, every time he gets to the bottom of the track, he likes it, especially if he's on four runners. Total time, 154.63 for Jamaica 1. Next up, from France, Christophe Flaché. Max Robert. 12th place, head of the first tee. shot as they come down the track here and again when you watch these sleds come on and off the corners you see those heads slapping side to side Clark is that a bad transition it certainly is you know you want to see their heads stay nice and steady just like you did there it's head didn't flick from side to side when they get their heads flicking back and forth then there's going to be a counter to that it'll diminish the time and it may send the sled sideways of course that'll really rip the time off this is a very important race to Christophe Flaché. This is the final race where they'll select the seeds for the Olympics. There's three seeds, a first, second, and third seed, and Flaché's having all he can do to finish in the top 10. And you can see it right there. That puts him in 12th place overall with a total time 153.21. Whether or not he moves up, he'll have to find out in the next couple sleds. Here it comes into the bottom part of the track, and the sled climbed on him there, Clark, and he had to make an adjustment. Yeah, he got off, uh, he had to give his direction a little too soon there. You see, he kicked sideways, he had so much pressure coming out. Christophe Flaché, France number one. Now up at the top of the track, it's USA number three. Driver Jim Herbert, the 88 Olympian from Winchester, Massachusetts. His brakeman, Chip Mitt, right, now, the corrections yeah, officer yeah, from Macon, yeah, Georgia. Yeah, let's go now. Tied for 10th at the end of the Keep first back. heat. They need a good start. Keeping his shoulders nice and tight. Watch when he loads here. He doesn't reach across. He's got good balance, leaps right in. Nice power driving step there by the brakeman. See him load in. 5.30 start though, Clark. Uh, he was going slower in his first heat. Look at his drive here. Yeah, legs, big high kick on the heels there, and they pull their knees up underneath and shoot right inside. Takes a little time to get settled here. So he wants to get let Jim get his position before he pulls his arms in. The Jeff Bonai made in America bobsled is the sled that he's driving, and boy, is it quiet, Clark. Yeah, nice and smooth, no sound. Absorbs all that energy that you see some of the other sleds rattling down the course. 76.5, that's good speed for this uh, late in the day. I'm gonna be watching the runner tips here. Nice straight. That's Boy, he's smooth, Clark. He's smooth. He had a great heat in the first uh, heat, but he started so late in the pack, he couldn't take advantage of that uh, ice. Well, it's great that he came in in the top 10. Of course, if he had been in 11th there, he would have been way back. Look at that, 56.41, Clark. That's only a couple hundred slower than his first heat. Jim Herbert. USA number three in the Bodine sled. I think that's a pretty good time. We're gonna find out real quick. Here we go, nice exit. Look at how low he is. Those runners are running straight. He got nice and low, good aerodynamic flow. See those tips going straight here? He really let this thing fly. Good speed into the Chrysler, the speed trap. USA number three, the Olympian from 88 from Winchester, Massachusetts, Jim Herbert, his brakeman, Chip Mitten. Now up, Dennis Marino and Mark Bruce, Canada number three. Slow start in the first heat. They got to improve that. Let's hope he can cut some time off. He had a 540 start in the first heat. Oh, good. He heel kick by the brakeman there. Mark Bruce, good drive into that sled. 539, they're 100 better in the second heat. Bruce from Edmonton. Here we're seeing the head. Dennis hold himself good and solid. He reaches across for balance there. Flips into the sled, and Mark had that great heel kick there as he pulls his knees up underneath him to get into the sled. Well, we're going to see times down here. USA 1 in this sled, or USA 3 in this sled are in a dead heat. Oh, but he's 20 hundreds behind Herbert right now. Well, hopefully he can catch up. That might be a sign of a slower start, but let's hope he can catch up towards the bottom here. A little bubble, so the speed's going to be crucial. 76-2. Not as much speed as the U.S. team. 
dead heat now they are with the U.S. at the end of the first heat. But this is Marino's home track. He's from Calgary. He knows this track like the back of his hand, but he's plus 25 there. That's not a good sign at all, Clark. No, he's, he's just not going to catch up. There's not enough track left, I don't think. Probably a 55 or so. 65, 56, 65. So that does show how good a heat Herbert had. Well, I think so. I think Dennis had a pretty clean run himself, but I think Jim just had a great run. Dennis Marino from Calgary. Here we see him out of Chrysler. Look at those runner tips. They're nice and straight. He's not steering. His head's down good and low. Well, he was smooth. He just didn't carry the speed that he needed, Clark. Nope, coming around here out of 11. Again, nice and low, up into 12. Nice high line. That's good. He's, he's a little Mr. Five White at that time, too. I would like to invite you to an exclusive free seminar coming soon to your area, designed only for those over age 60, with estates valued at $3 million or more. This special seminar is unlike any you've ever attended. Why? Because you'll discover powerful and often overlooked estate planning strategies used by Malcolm Forbes and many others to preserve their lifetime of wealth. This exciting two-and-a-half-hour seminar will reveal how to reduce your estate tax costs by up to 90%, increase your IRA 10 to 20 times, how to guarantee your family $5 million for $25,000 yearly, the six most costly estate planning mistakes, and how to make your municipal bonds income and estate tax free. Better still, you'll receive a free video, the six most costly estate planning mistakes. For the seminar location nearest you, call toll-free 1-800-662-5433 today and reserve your place at this free seminar. Seats are limited. Prime Hoops is hopping with the Atlantic 10. Where else are you going to find pump slime and camera crash and nothing but nuts and cherry tree chopping? It's a 10 action and Prime Hoops has them. George Washington in West Virginia, live Sunday at 4.30 on Prime. Zone. Welcome back to Winter Speed. Two of the three USA sleds in the competition today are Jeff Bodine Design. He's standing by with Blaine Applegate. All right, John, thank you very much. Standing by with Jeff Bodine, a newcomer to the bobsled scene. Jeff, your first World Cup race. What are you, what are you feeling right about now? I'm excited. Kind of like the, uh, the athletes. Uh, just waiting to see that uh, sled come down the run for the first time. I've never seen a race, seen a lot of testing and practice, but, you know, racing is different. It's like in, in NASCAR, Winston Cup. Uh, everyone waits for the start. We're waiting for the start here. You've invested a lot of time, a lot of money. Has it been worth it for, for you so far? Uh, without a doubt. You know, I'm no second thoughts. I'm glad it happened. I'm glad I took that first ride at Lake Placid with Bruce Roselli. I'm glad I hit the wall in the last corner when I drove the sled and bent his frame. So I had to say, Bruce, you know, I'm going to build your bobsled. And if I hadn't done any of that, uh, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have these American-made sleds behind me uh, out here in, in the competition. How does the atmosphere compare with that of an auto racing atmosphere on race day? It's uh, excitement, you know, it's here, it's in the air. The race fans, uh, the Bob fans are waiting for it all to start. Okay, Jeff, thanks for your time. John, back to you. Now up top of the track, USA number one, Brian Scheimer, Naples, Florida. His break, Randy Jones. Ninth place, end of the first tee. Very disappointing. Little Bob into the push bar there. He wants to make sure he makes that nice transition. They should be below that 5.30 start time. They're in the 20s in the first heat. 5.26, they improved at the start. That's great to see, boy. They're certainly pumped up. They know they got to get down this hill quick to get in the top five. Scheimer, one of the best pushing drivers in the world. Good load. You can see his feet come in together. Gets his hands down under. Again, nice, nice load by the brakeman, Randy Jones, too. He's only got a cup 300 to the lead on Herbrick. The USA number slip. Look at that, he's minus three now. So that means Herbert's got a better heat going here. Scheimer's gonna have to carry speed like Herbert did or he's gonna be in trouble. Only minus one, only 76-4. This is gonna be extremely close between Scheimer and his countryman, Jim Herbert. Let's look for the top of the lap. This should be about equal. Plus or minus 100. There's... Look at that dead heat. So I think Herbert's gonna get him on the bottom unless Scheimer can get some magic here. Herbert might go ahead of Scheimer. He's only got 300s to play with. The Bodine slide into the finish. Oh, Scheimer pulled some magic on the bottom. It was a dead heat going to the last clock. So the two Bodine sleds going head to head here, and Scheimer maintains his lead. Well, that was a great comparison.
Harrison run. Boy, they had did pretty well the same start times. Here we see him coming in that straightaway, nice and low. You can see that sled is just beautiful. There's no noise coming out of it. Nice and low on the sled, so aerodynamics, a good clean flow. They're nice, even line all the way across around. Hands not moving. Look going at the out. runner tips. No spray coming off. A little bit on the back there. But boy, back end got a little round, but boy, he sure got control of it quickly coming into 10. Total time, 152.76. Much better heat for Brian Scheimer in USA number one. Now up at the top of the track. Great Britain number one, Mark Tau. Eric Seckwaller. They're only two hundredths of a second ahead of the USA number one sled. Five hundredths ahead of the USA number three sled. Well, Mark's a big guy, tall guy, good track and field background. Start time, 5.31. He's given a little bit. He, in the first heat, it was 525, so he's given that little bit up already. Here he is. Good drive with his knees. He steps right across. Big, long, long, long legs so he can get in quickly. Brakeman takes his time, settles in nice and quietly. So this time and the left is the time he's challenging against Brian Scheimer of the U.S. He's got a lead on Scheimer of 200. Oh, plus 13. A good sign for the Americans. Bad sign for the British. He's going to have to get some good 76-6 speeds or chase 70. No speed, so the British are going to fall off the pace here, Clark. It's going to be tough for him to make it up. You can see his head angling. Oh, he, oh, he touched the side there. See a little snow kicking up there. He doesn't want that to happen. Doesn't seem like much of that little touch, Clark, when that erases so much time. Remember, in bobsled, he's not the guy who drives the most of the wins. It's the guy who drives the least. And it looks like Chow has been doing a lot of driving on this trip way off the pace. So USA sleds have both moved ahead of this British competitor. And Dennis Merrill also moved ahead of the British competitor. Well, he's going to be really disappointed. I think first with the start and then with his driving. You see him coming out of here, coming out of Chrysler. He had a nice line there. There was a little bit of snow kicking up, but then he let that sled drift into that counter wall, pushes him off. He's going to lose time there for sure. You'll miss his exit into the, or his entrance into 10. A heat that Great Britain one would like to forget. Total time, 153.08. Now up at the top of the track. USA number two sled. Randy Will, Jeff Woodard on the brakes. Both from New York State. Will, the two-time Olympian from Endicott, New York. Woodard on the 92 team, he's from Schenectady. Woodard probably one of the strongest men in the world of bobsled. Big, powerful arms and shoulders. You can see himself dogging his head back and forth, though. He's got to tighten up his arms so he doesn't do that. He's wasting energy. 535 start. So he's got a little work to do down the track. He had a 33 in the first heat climb. Here we see his head's going back and forth. That's because he's not keeping his shoulders tight. But he's got good leg drive there. Pulls his knees in underneath. He's got to do that to get a nice, clean entrance into the sled. He doesn't want to dog the driver. Oh, well, he's got a, quite a lead on his countryman, Brian Scheimer. So he's going to have to watch out. The time at the left, he's 1,400s behind there. He's going to have to start diminishing that, or Scheimer will go ahead of him, too. 76.6 speed is what he's looking for. 76.0, not very good speed for Randy Well. He's going to have to motor in the bottom here. Time on the left to Scheimer. There's only about 700 separating these guys. Although he's smooth down below, he doesn't seem to be as fast at all. He's... No, he's got a little time. He's going to watch out. The Canadian Dennis Merrill could get him. Both American sleds, USA 1 and 3 could pass Randy here. He's going to watch out. 56, 72, good enough for fourth place. He's dropped three places. Randy Will, USA number two. I don't know where he went wrong, Clark. He didn't have that bad a start. He looked pretty good coming down the track, but that wasn't the same first heat that he had. No, I think he's overdriving a little. He's being a little too cautious there. He's controlling it a little too much. He's got to let that sled run. Boy, he looks smooth here, Clark. Look at the rudder tips. No spray. Everything coming at us. Nice don't know, and low. Don't know why he went slow. He had a perfect trip visually to us, but that's what bobsledding's all about. You might not have seen that little nuance in there where he turned the sled to cause the time to... Uh, be what it was but boy he looks smooth Clark yeah yeah maybe too smooth maybe we saw him overdriving there Randy will USA number two 15305 good enough for fourth place top of the leaderboards USA one and three though Scheimer and Herbert Canada three's not far behind we come back we have more action on winter speed including some features remember the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat We've got the guy who made the call of this famous action shot. Desire and dedication might deliver you to the top, but staying there takes technical perfection and smooth, consistent performance. 
In the race for world-class achievement, the 12,000 men and women of York International and its worldwide dealer network share something in common with our U.S. athletes and everyone else striving to be the world's best. We'll never settle for second place. For world-class heating and air conditioning equipment, call your York dealer. He's in the Yellow Pages. Your fill of highlights from the English Premier League, the Champions League, and World Cup 94 action all season. Kick with us around the world with the International Soccer Update every week on Prime. Bring in the new year this January with Prime and experience the holiday cheer. We'll hit the ice for the college hockey game of the week and check out some pro action in the IHL. Then we'll hit the hardwood for some high-flying, rim-rattling college hoops with your favorite schools across the nation. We'll also hit the slope and get vertical with the all-new Snow Zone. Make your resolution to join Prime in January as we ring in a happy new year. Stump, and this is my good friend Ace. Together we make ski films. This is what we call the control room, where one controls the edit, manufactures the energy and the feel of the picture. In 1984, we made a film entitled Maltese Flamingo, and in that film there was a segment called Moguls, part one. I'd like to share that with you. Skiing from Europe in Moguls Part 1 in Maltese Flamingo. The high-speed camera brings an entirely new perspective to mogul skiing. Slow down to the point where you can actually digest what the skier is doing. Mogul skiing takes on a false sense of simplicity. Maneuvers which in reality take just fractions of a second now appear slow and graceful. All the elements can be dissected and observed independently. The quick transfer of weight, the short radius turns, the fast snapping pole plants identifiable and effortless here in slow motion. World Cup champion Steve Desevich's angulation. Steve carves his ski with the expertise of a champion racer. Many people say today's top mogul skiers are as proficient technically as the top racers. Perhaps. But one thing's for sure. No matter what discipline of skiing you compete in, if you don't turn the ski properly, you can't win. Despite that philosophy, there remains controversy in mogul skiing. This is France's Eric Berton. He won the world championships with this run. Is he just skiing on the tails of his skis? Or is he simply the most phenomenal mogul skier you've ever seen? You decide. If you like rookies and underdogs, here's the guy you should root for. Our own Flamingo crew member, Scott Ogren. Ogren earned a spot on the World Cup Tour this coming season. The veterans on the tour had better start worrying. Look at the fire in this kid's eyes.
interested in improving your own mogul skiing, let these slow motion images stay somewhere in your mind's eye. Think of the way these guys ski. Remember it. And the next time you're at the top of a steep, ghastly pile of moguls, take it on with all you've got, like Desovich, Berton, and Ogren do. And that concludes Moguls Part 1. Okay, that just about wraps up another edition of our segment of the Snow Zone. My name's Greg Stump, and this is young Adrian here, and uh, we're signing off from the control room here. And uh, we'll be editing and putting together some more stuff for you next week on The Snow Zone. I patrol the snow zone. No speed limits here. Do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That what most people don't know about AIDS is still a video. Time out. The truth about HIV, AIDS, and you. It's filled with facts and fun. And a lot of hot folks, too, but most of all, stuff that could save your life. If you've got unprotected sex, help! Still feel safe? Time out. Rent one free at participating video stores. HIV, AIDS, and you. If you don't know, get the video. to winter speed. It's now time for a York Olympic venue update. A lot of indications that a lot of track records are going to fall at the upcoming Lillehammer Olympics. With each passing Olympic Games, world records are broken. True, the athletes are getting faster and stronger, but technology plays a big part as well. One of the reasons that records are expected to fall is in the Hammer Olympia Amphitheater, um, we've got a closely controlled, environmentally sealed type of, uh, uh, of arena whereby the York system handles dehumidification and as well as providing the refrigeration effect. So close control of the environment should allow for very consistent and stable ice temperatures. Last year, in fact, at one of the test uh, events that took place at that venue, the Norwegian champion came very close to shattering the world record. Uh, most of the event organizers expect that those world records will fall this year. As you look at the ski jumps here at Canada Olympic Park, think of perhaps the most famous ski jumper of all time. You've all seen the shot. This is the story behind the agony defeat you saw in Wide World of Sports all those years and the guy who made the call. Vinko Bogataz, the Yugoslavian, the youngster, his inexperience, he fell on his first jump. A lot of speed in that track. Now, look, look, at look at him go! Oh I just got through saying to Bud Palmer, you know, this guy's nothing but an accident on the way to happen. I didn't need more and get it out of my mouth, and here he goes, end over end. And that was, that was quite a sight, I can tell you that. And Art, this is the first time in my career as we look at it in slow motion, it's exactly what happened. I've never seen a fellow fall on the in-run in a big hill before, but right here, that rough spot on the in-run, there it is, you see it catching his right leg? Holy cat. Believe it or not, he wasn't hurt. 
but you don't see that. He goes into the crowd, and as he goes into the crowd, it's a domino effect. The people just went plop, 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 and it just broke its fall. So he wasn't hurt badly. He got a little banged up, but not much. Did it give the sport a bad reputation? Heck no, it's still on the billboard of ABC. They took it off for a while, because a few mamas of ski jumpers or something call in, and so they took it off, and they got so many other letters saying what happened to the guy in White World. It's just never been back on, never went off again. And the agony of the beat. <laughs> footage of Wide World. When we come back at winter speed, it's more World Cup to men pop footing from Calgary. Stay with us here at Prime Network. My mother, chairman of Columbia Sportswear, honed her outerwear design skills while raising me in Oregon. In fact, she developed jackets that stand up to everything Mother Nature can throw at a human being. For the Columbia Sportswear dealer nearest you, call 1-800-CAR-BOIL. When most manufacturers develop a new truck, they start with a model. Good idea. Here's ours. Introducing the first and only family of trucks designed from the inside out. A design that starts with you and has become the all-new Chevy S-Series. Everything else is history. I'm the keeper of the snow zone. Welcome back to World Cup Two Men Bobsledding from Canada Olympic Park in Calgary, Alberta. As the second heat continues. Next up, at the top of the track, Pasquale Gasquito, the first man that broke the track record in the first heat. 531 in the first heat for the start is Brakeman, Antonio, Tartaglia. 529, better start in the second heat. Yeah, they certainly, well, they've got the potential to even go a little faster here, too, though. Here we see him, he's a good pushing driver. Pulls those legs up and underneath, you can see him arc himself forward here, and hear the brake that leaves his arms out just a bit. You wanna, have, wanna let that driver get settled before you pull yourself into that sled. Well, time at the left, the USA number one sled, Brian Scheimer, and he's plus to that. That's all related to the start, so that means he's gonna have a good time here. He's gonna have 76.5 or so speed. Unless he makes, but no, he's gonna have some good speed here, Clark. 76.3, that's probably gonna be good enough for him to maintain his placing. He's got about 1,300s to play with, so the next clock here, 1,300s lead he's got on Scheimer. That's plus seven. So, he's reeling him in, bit by bit. Well, I think it's gonna be dead heat. Gonna be within a couple hundreds more than that. He goes ahead of the USA sleds, and he does by only 300s on this heat. 56.47, first overall. Only two tenths lower than his first heat. That's good to see. He's driving consistently here. The track's not wearing down that much. That's a real positive. Here he is in the curve. The Omega Coming corner. around seven. He wants a nice, smooth entrance. He doesn't want to kick up any ice here. Picks his point, gives it direction, and it comes shooting off into that straightaway. Yeah. Nice smooth transition yeah, there. No yeah. heads rocking side to side. When you see the heads flicking back and forth, that means they're a rough transition. They're overdriving. Policeman from Cortina. First place overall. It's now time on winter speed for our tech time, or our technical moment in bobsledding. This week, we focus on downloading of information from data acquisition systems on the sleds.
last decade in auto racing has seen the development of onboard telemetry systems, which allow pit crews to properly monitor the performance of cars during competition. This year, the sport of bobsledding has also seen onboard telemetry systems placed on the sleds. IBM ThinkPad 700 series computers are being used by the USA bobsled team to capture data downloaded from onboard sensors attached to many moving parts on the sleds. Having ThinkPads almost immediately on the slope analysis helps the technical crew to customize the sleds based on the specific weather and ice conditions and allows athletes and coaches to make strategy adjustments based on hard technical data. 1992 U.S. Olympic bobsled team member Carlos Kirby talks of the value of the data acquisition systems. In the six years I've done this, to get out of the bottom of the sled and find an IBM ThinkPad computer coming out and they plug it into the sled and they're getting data as far as uh, the g-forces and the speeds and everything like that, this is, it's coming a long way. I'm really excited for the things that come this year. This bobsled technical moment has been brought to you by the IBM ThinkPad, official notebook computer of the U.S. bobsled team. Now up at the top of the track, Chris Lord, Glenn Roy Gilbert. The start's going to be all important here for Chris. He had a 5.33 in the first heat. Maybe he's going to be good and pumped for the second. 528. Wow. Great start. Great start. Well, he gets better every run. He works with Glenroy. Here we see Chris. Good track background there. Nice load. Got his feet up. Good and high. And Glenroy with that big Oh, he jet. slipped a little faster than Arn didn't get around Clark. I don't know if that'll cost him. But he's got a pretty good lead on those sleds in front of him. 26. He should be at least that. There he's got it. No, 20. 26-18, so under thought at this point. Let's hope he gets the next transition here into eight. Watch this high 76 mile an hour speed. This guy's a veteran pilot, 76-5. You sort of expect that out of him. Now he definitely knows this track. Touching that, rubbing down on that right-hand side, that wouldn't hurt him, though. In fact, dead heat so far with the best heat so far. The tires for Brian Scheimer's time, but Chris Lorre looks like he's got a comfortable place in here. He's gonna be on the top of the leaderboard right here, and he is. 56-42. Chris Laurie, Glenn Roy Gilbert, the track and field athlete for Canada's bronze medal winning sprint team this summer. First place overall, four by 100 relay team, Glenn Roy Gilbert was on it. Well, look at this transition here, Clark, perfect. Yeah, it's heads down and low. You see the sled, it's not hopping up and down. The runners are jumping a little bit, but he's keeping them nice and straight. Not driving at all. The secret, look at the helmets. Look at Glenn Roy Gilbert buried in the back of that sled. Boy, for the first year in the sport, he's doing great. Yeah, this experience here, and they're going to place well in this event. I'll tell you, every trip he goes down, he gets better. So our top three sleds is Canada 2 and Chris Laurie in first, Italia 2 in second, USA's Brian Scheimer in third. On this record-breaking day here in Calgary, our four top sleds are yet to go. America's favorite surfing group, the Beach Boys. I wish they all could be California girls. Wouldn't it be nice if we were older? Then we wouldn't have to wait so long. The Beach Boys' 22 greatest hits on compact disc or double-length cassette for only $9.99. That's over an hour's worth of music. Help me run now. And other classic rock albums. Satisfaction is guaranteed. Here's how to order. To order, call 1 800 838 7700 or send $9.99 for one cassette or one compact disc. Plus $3.50 shipping and handling to Beach Boys, Department 1, Richmond, Virginia. Phones open 24 hours. Check out the sticks. The big sticks. Shots. 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 The hot shots of the NHL get their AT on Brute Presents Hockey Week. Every week on Prime. Winter Speed on Prime Network has been brought to you by York International, world leader in heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration technology for sports venues. By Columbia Sportswear Company. 
and by the IBM ThinkPad, official notebook computer of the U.S. bobsled team. From the Czech Republic, Jerry Demira, Pavel Polomsky. Good start team. Yeah, look at the bar, not moving up and down at all. Nice tight shoulders. 22. Oh, powerful start. That's what these guys are. They're just power. Well, these guys were in third place. Into the first look at the strength here, the driver. Big quads on these guys. That really helps. Nice kick up by the brakeman there. Takes his time getting settled there. You don't want to rush your entrance into the sled. Well, once you get out of those groove lines at the start, that's going to hurt you if you're moving around. Boy, he's got a great heat here, too, Clark. He's 1100s better. This is going to, if he gets high 76 mile an hour speeds, he can put himself in silver medal contention. Oh, he got no speed, though. He must have done too much spirit uh, steering in the Omega, Clark. He's doing a little bit in the Chrysler, too, though. 4708, that's USA number one time. He's dead heat with that second competitor. Well, we've seen that. He's losing a little time here, though, Clark. He's not taking advantage of that great start time he had. Well, we got to see that 10th. Should be about boy. a 45. There's 42. Well, he still caught Chris, though. He had a bit of a lead on Chris going into the heat, and he held on to it. That start got Chris Laurie there. The Czechs, though, the Czech Republic. Hey, he's the top of the leaderboard right now. Couldn't have been too bad, Clark. Next up from Italy, it's Gunter Huber and Stefano Tizzi. They're tied for second in the first heat. You want to know how good a pilot this is? Look at last year's World Cup two-man final results. Italy won in first, Huber, Vader, second. USA's Brian Scheimer in third. Little man pushing the sled, but boy, he's not little when he gets in driving. He's one of the best in the world. And Stefano, the best technician at the start for a break in there. 527 start, man, for a guy this small to get that quick start time. Look, here we see him driving with his knees and getting them up behind him there. Big heel kick here by, by Stefano there. Nice, easy load. Well, we've got a great race going on here, folks. I want to tell you right now, it's awesome time separating these sleds. He's in a dead heat now for second place with the British coming up behind him. Shadows, time and a lap, the time he needs. He needs a 76 plus. Look at that, minus two, 76, seven, the best speed so far. This guy's some kind of pilot, Clark. Oh, he's got that. He got that luge experience. It comes from his brothers in the family. But as wow. well, he's got some good experience here. He's driving really well. Look at that. Look at that. Here. Yeah, he's you know he's going to be down in the high 20s here, probably a 56, 28 or so for the Italian. He's a masterful pilot. 56, 20, Clark. That's a fantastic time in the second heat. I tell you, when you're only 1,700s off your time in the first heat, and you're well known on the track like the buzz with for today's competition open up, that's just great. Let's watch him here out of Omega, Clark. I mean, this guy's got to be one of the best guys in the hand-eye coordination in the world. You see his line here. He's holding it nice and low, and that's what you want to do. You don't want to let the sled get up on you. Look at the transition. High up there, Clark. Look at the rudder tips there. Any spray coming off those rudders a little bit in the back little, end? Wow. A little bit of a brush there. Boy, he picks his high point, and he gives it direction, and just comes firing off into that straightaway. One of the best in the world, Gunter Huber of Italy. Top of the leaderboard with two sleds yet to come here in winter speed. How about a nice cup of joe at that two-man bobsled? The Jeff Bodine Bobsled Project, building the first USA-made Olympic bobsleds since 1956. Purchase official apparel and collectibles today. All proceeds go directly to the U.S. bobsled team for equipment and technical support. Call 1-800-BOBSLED today. At GMC Truck. We built a reputation for truck strengths. A considerable advantage. It also comes in this handy take home side. Sierra from GMC Truck. group of Americans living below the poverty line. They have to reach higher for what others take for granted. Health care, balanced meals, encouragement to learn. But with help early on, 
children in your community can gain the skills to get out from below the poverty line. It takes programs like Success by Six and people like you to help them take the first step. Call to learn more. Change the world of a child, and you change the world. Now up at the top of the track. Two sleds yet to go in this World Cup competition. Sean Olsen, Great Britain number two. Lenny Paul on the brakes. Fantastic start in the first heat. Here they go. Now they're going to be chasing the start record here of 514 and Pear Looters 515 in the start in the first heat. <laughs> Look at the head going up and down, not side to side, Clark. Probably be all over that 522. 517. Oh, what great start. I'll tell you, that track and field background. When you see him start here up at the top, you see the break, the driver now standing back in the block, diving at the push bar. Back's loaded. Good turn over. Big kick by that ball as he loads himself into the sled there. Boy, these British. What a surprise. Well, time in the left. He's in a dead heat now with Hoover. Oh, he's 700s ahead. That's all relation to the start. That, I tell you what, the next clock, if we see that diminished, I think Hoover's going to get him. He's in a dead heat now with Hoover. Time, 76-7, 76-5, not as good as speed. This little is going to be close, Clark. A little high here in Chrysler. Let's see if his ex tonight. Played all little sideways there. You saw his running steering off. Well, he's got, it's a dead heat now. Oh, he's got 500s to play with, with 300 meters to go. Sean Olsen of Great Britain rushing to the finish. Him and Hoover head to head. Who's going to be in first? Oh! just nipped him on the bottom so Sean Olsen couldn't hold the great start lost to Hoover by two hundredths of a second bobsled racing at the best Clark how did he ever lose it though I mean he looked like he was good on the bottom but again Hoover the I best think, I think we're going to see it fall out of here he comes out of Chrysler here he's still steering his direction isn't to 10 he comes right across late entrance into 10 flicks up and on I think that's where he had the first of his problems here Guaranteed a silver, or at least a bronze medal in the competition, but boy, that little tap out of Kreisel cost him the silver medal and the best performance of his life. He still likes it. Well, I'm sure he's got to be happy. Up at the top of the track, the first place team at the end of the first team, Pierre Luters, David McEachran. Luters from Edmonton, McEachran from Prince Edward Island. Let's hope they can blow this start record apart. Push bar, that's what he needs. Both picking up and down a bit. Best pushing team in the world. 515 of the first team. Yeah. Oh, oh, start oh, record. He just ate it up. Boy, I'll tell you the power these guys have. You know, they're big boys, 210 pounds. Look at the quads on Pierre. Watch McKechwood's power step with the sled. He kicks his heel onto his rear end. New start record for Canada. Boy, it's going to be hard for him to blow this on the way down. They're almost going to have to crash not to have this victory to tie the bottom of the track. Record. Look at I'll tell you, he's flicking on and off these curves. Oh, that's nice to see. Oh, a oh, little high there, Clark. Nice smooth there. You see a little snow kick up. That's okay. 76-4. That's plenty of speed, Clark. He's got a big lead. Canada. Pierre Luders, the defending champion. Oh, he, he last he year. got himself kicked back around there a little bit. That, that'll that hurt just a tad, though. Oh, he's got minus eight here, Clark. I don't know. He's got 1,800s to play with now. Into the finish. Canada won. Pierre Luders for the victory. Oh. Canada won. Two gold medals and two consecutive years for Pierre Luders and David McEachran. Boy, Clark, I got to believe this is a potential Olympic hold for Canada. The best starting team. Pierre Luders, 23 years old. Boy, has he got a future in this sport. Well, in the first heat, he walked away with a crack record of the downtime, and in the second heat, he walks away with a start record. Boy, a little high there in that corner there, Clark, but, boy, I tell you. A little skid here, too. Watch him come out of the cries. Look at yeah. his runner, Tim. He steers it all across there, counters, front end hits, and then the back end will hit and get himself sideways. Hey, when you got that good a start, you can make this type of mistake down below. Well, I think that's what's showing here. When you got that, as you say, that kind of start there, little mistakes aren't going to hurt you as much as they will with the slower starts. Yeah. Well, Pierre Luters is our winner. But look how close the second and third was. The Italian Hoover and Olsen. Standing by with the winner is Blaine Applegate. All right, John, thank you very much. Standing by with race winner Pierre Luters. Pierre, big win for you today. What was the critical part of the race for you? Uh, well, definitely uh, the race was won at the start. Uh, I can't say enough about Dave McEachern and... Uh, the pushes he gave me today, just unbelievable. Uh, we knew that, but uh, it was just a matter of 
you know, we have to get a little more consistent. And uh, today we proved that, uh, you know, we can start with the best of them. As far as the first start and the second start, what did you say to Dave as far as cranking it up for the second start? Uh, actually, we just uh, we just made two goals, and one was to drive better, which we didn't achieve. Uh, the other one was to start better, and uh, I think it helped that the British uh, had a really good start before us because uh, we take pride in knowing that we're the fastest starting team here in our track, and uh, we didn't like the fact that they were as close to us as they were on the start, on the second one, and uh, we didn't have to say it to each other. We both knew, and uh, I think we just sort of picked it up from there. Track records falling all over the place today. How come? Oh, well, I think uh, the important thing is is that uh, the track crew here at uh, Canada Olympic Park uh, is probably the best track crew in the world in terms of getting a track ready for a race. Uh, this is now two, probably three years in a row where the track has just been lightning fast. And uh, again, the, the credit goes to them. They had the track in uh, perfect, perfect shape. Okay, Pierre Luters, thank you very much. John, now back to you. And best for the United States was Scheimer in seventh, Herbert in ninth, Will in tenth. Scheimer had some problems in the first heat. We had a chance to talk to him about it. Had a little problem in the first heat. Uh, before one, I wrapped my rope around my leg and didn't grab the rope till one. Hit the wall, cost us a little bit of time, and uh, with a good draw like that, that's something you don't want to do. Came back in the second heat, had the fourth fastest heat, I think, uh, and, as well as the fourth fastest push. So I think if we can get our pushes down, be the first off the top of the hill in the push, we'll be the first to the bottom. So I think that's where we, we got to really focus on now. You're looking at two people who could probably win Canada's first Olympic medal since 64. Next on winter speed, it's back to Lilyhammer for doubles luge. We'll also have some skeleton action for you from Calgary. All that and more on our next winter speed. At York, we carefully build and test our high-efficiency gas furnaces to make them so trouble-free. See, we know that cowboys, architects, and our future Olympians need a carefree environment. So even if you're off to ski the French Alps, you can be comfortable with where you're headed. York, proud sponsor of the 92 U.S. Olympic team. For the best in heating and air conditioning equipment, see your local York dealer. He's in the yellow pages under heating and air conditioning. Chairman Columbia Sportswear, my son Tim, our president, to demonstrate our interchange system. The liner zips in for maximum warmth. The outer shell is weatherproof. Wear it together or separately. Best of all, it comes in dozens of styles. I voted against that. Call 1 800 Mile Boil. It seems these days folks are taking a new look at their priorities. With that in mind, Chevy brings you the roomiest full-size pickup ever made. So that family can come first. And work second. The extended cab from Chevrolet. Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Stan, man, and I'm back. Wasn't that a great show? I hope you join us next week for the second stop on the Women's Pro Tour. We're going to have the, the double luge competition. We're going to have more Greg Stump. And don't forget, we'll see you again on the Snow Zone.
snow zone like the snow zone.